Hi, this is your girl behind the counter, Bridget Bardot, for all you know. We are on part three of this Fassbinder retrospective where people went and like gave me submissions of stuff to watch by Werner Fassbinder because I don't know that much about him. So this is gonna, these are actually gonna be like the next reviews, or at least these last reviews are gonna be three reviews from I on Cinema with a C-Y, Cinema, <laughs> Cinema, I don't know. Um, so for you, I on Cinema, we are starting with In a Year with 13 Moons, which is a very, very intense film uh, by Werner Fassbinder. So just a little bit of a background on it. It was a film that was created in response to the suicide of Armin Merrier, Merrier um, who I believe was Fassbinder's lover. So this is a film that comes from a very emotional place and I think also a place of a little bit of guilt um, just going on with the plot. So going on with the plot, we meet our heroine, Elvira, who is played by Vol Volker, Volk Spenger, Volker Spenger, I don't know how to pronounce these names. <laughs> um, so Elvira, we meet her when she is trying to go and get a John to have sex with her and she gets beaten up because of it. Um, after that, she goes home and her lover is there and he's basically like, I am so sick of you and he abuses her horribly and he throws her out like a big old sack of shit. And she goes and she like tries running after him and stuff like that, pounding on his car, but he just drives off because he's a fucking turd sandwich. But the only person who's not a turd sandwich to Elvira is her best friend Zora, who is played by Ingrid Coven. Caven? I'm not sure. German people, help me. Any German viewers want to help with the pronunciations? Uh, greatly, greatly needed on this lady's part. So Zora and Elvira basically go on a journey to <clears throat> sort of find out her past. And also Elvira is confronted by her ex-wife who she had a child with. Elvira did a bit of an interview with a tabloid about this gangster who's a very malevolent sort of guy and she basically talked a lot of shit and now Elvira's ex-wife is quite worried about her and is quite worried about their daughter. So I have been trying, so I've been referring to Elvira with her correct pronouns. Um, Elvira is a male to female um, trans woman. And there's sort of, at least in the beginning, there's sort of a bit of a smattering that she regrets her gender reassignment surgery and at least what happened with her with her genitals and about the alienation she feels with that so the reason why i bring this up is because as we learn a little bit more about elvira's past and about how lonely she was and how her life is from the very beginning sort of full of a of like a like a consistent misery a consistent lack of love and you learn a little bit later about her gender reassignment surgery and the relationship that she has with that gangster who she wound up going and sort of gossiping about and you'll have to watch the film to sort of get the end of that but I do I did want to bring up sort of the gender reassignment thing just because it is something that does play in the film um so i guess also i should i've been forgetting to put content warnings so 
content guide for a year with 13 moons. Um, so I believe we have nudity in there. Um, there is a content guide for transphobia, for some incorrect pronouns. We've also got like people using some interesting terminology and stuff like that. So if you're not in the mood to, for, for dealing with some transphobia in your media right now, this ain't, this ain't the movie for you and misgendering and stuff like that. And uh, it's a product of its time. Uh, the handling of the subject, uh, the handling of some subjects in regards to gender reassignment surgery and the transphobia and um, feeling like you're not exactly in the right gender is not exactly handled with the most amount of sensitivity and nuance, let's just say. So there's a content guide for that and also a really big content guide for this one. There is suicide in this, just letting you know there's there's auto asphyxiation and there is suicide in this. Um, auto erotic asphyx it's auto asphyxiation. God saying that say that five times fast. There's auto erotic asphyx asphyxiation and there is a big content warning for suicide. There is suicide in this movie, just letting you know that um it's it's a very harsh movie let's just say anyways <laughs> we have elvira who is fan fucking tastic she is very she's funny she's dramatic she's definitely a bit of a masochist and i would say that she's sort of a sad person but there's almost sort of a joy to her like a little bit of a giddiness. She does tend to be a little bit self-pitying, but at the same time, it's very understandable given the, given the circumstances that she is in. So going into her friend Zora, her friend Zora is just fantastic. She's a little ray of shun sunshine in the entirety of this. She's very like free and very sort of manic and very she's freeing and she makes honestly a really good contrast with elvira and i also love the fact that it's like an older woman younger woman relationship and it's great and it's fantastic i i can't really tell you why i love the older woman with younger woman like friendship kind of a thing but i kind of like it i think it's not something that's really explored that much in film so it's nice to see a friendship between an older lady and a younger lady um but that being said, in terms of the rest of the cast, there's not a t I mean, their characterization is very much in response to Elvira and what she has been through with them and what she has to say about them. I mean, the reason why I bring up Zora is because I feel like she's the one with the most sort of agency. I mean, we learn a little bit about Elvira's former lover who tried to be an actor, was not very successful at it, stuff like that. And we learn a little bit about the guy who she really went and gossiped against and a little bit about their relationship as well, which is heartbreaking and sad. Um, so this a little bit, of, so that's just a little bit about the characters. They're, I would say that they're, Elvira is the most fleshed out out of everyone, but then again, it's very much her story, which I think is very interesting because she's a woman in a, she's a very marginalized sort of woman in a story that's kind of all about her. You know, somebody who normally in this society that they're currently living in is sort of discounted and discredited. It's nice having a story that's just all about her and her life and her experiences. So just getting into the cinematography, um, it has some of my favorite shots uh, in these films so far, which include, there's like this sort of auto asphyxiation scene 
uh, where somebody goes and finds Elvira passed out. Uh, and we get to see it through a keyhole, and it's great. And there is also another scene where we just, Elvira is honestly framed really nicely. She's very femininely framed and almost weirdly objectified by the camera because like you get to see all her curves and stuff like that. And it's very much a camera looking at her rather as sort of a figure rather than sort of a subject. And I think they create some really great shots with her. And it's really very much this great objectifying without being like skeevy. Is, does that make any sense? So it's objectification without being terribly skeevy. Um, and going into the costumes, every, most costumes are very realistic, but I do really want to give a shout out to all of Elvira's costumes ever. They are so extra. I know that in like the beginning, she is working some Grey Gardens magic. Uh, uh, in her outfit and then just oh her outfits just get slowly but surely better it's a shame that her story is so tragic because she's truly got some fantastic taste in clothes but that is a that's kind of a tacky thing to say I guess but her story is very sad and very tragic but she does have fantastic taste in clothes so just going and rating in a year of 13 moons I'm giving it Four Elvira's out of five. I mean, I think it's partially in the order that I watched it. I watched this directly after Ali Fury's The Soul, and that is just a fucking masterpiece. If you haven't seen the review, go back there and see it. Um, but also, it's, I think what really is missing from In a Year with 13 Moons is a humanization of the of the supporting cast. There's a lot of focus on Elvira. There's a lot of focus on her, but I think it's at the detriment of the rest of the men and women around her. Um, and I think the other big problem with it, the reason why I'm not giving it five, is I. it has a bit of a slower pace. It takes its time. There's. I can't say that this is a thing, this is like a movie where a ton like happens, happens. It's more about it's more about this woman's life and the conversations she gets in, the arguments she gets in, how she handles things. It's not necessarily plot driven, but that being said, it can drag a little bit. It can kind of go through a bit of a drag. I'm not saying that it's like a perfect study like Ali. I'm saying that it's a little bit, a little bit more of a flawed sort of telling. I think there's really places that he could have gone with Elvira, which he just didn't, maybe for the sake of time, maybe for the sake of the fact that it was too painful at this moment. And he was trying to get sort of these feelings about his friend's suicide, about his lover's suicide out. Um, so that's why A Year With 13 Moons gets four incredibly fabulous Elviras out of five. I think in terms of Fassbinder's filmography and where to sort of start, I don't know if I'd necessarily start with this one, but I think it's certainly one to go and, t go and check out. And I really thank you, Ion Cinema, for going and showing this film to me because I had a great time with it. Um, I am Bridget Bardot, for all you know, your girl behind the counter, signing off. <laughs>